Welcome to our video on TensorFlow Serving. Today we'll be looking at one way of using TensorFlow Serving for serving our models. We'll start with a brief overview of the TensorFlow Serving architecture, which summarizes the architecture overview page provided on the TensorFlow website, and linked in the additional resources slide. There is a ton to know about TensorFlow Serving, and it can feel a bit overwhelming at first, especially if you just want to get a general idea of how to use it. There are some starter tutorials online, but they are currently a little outdated, and for that reason, we'll dive right in and walk through how to serve an issue request to our model with TensorFlow Serving, which will give you a very quick sense of the general processes involved. After that, we'll peek under the hood and go into more detail on how it all works. If you go to the architecture overview of TensorFlow Serving on tensorflow.org, this is the main diagram you'll see. It's a great illustration of the entire TensorFlow Serving architecture. The interesting thing is, as we'll see in our tutorial in a few moments, you don't really have to know about any of this if you simply want to use TensorFlow Serving. This is certainly not obvious from reading the documentation, but it's important to remember so that you don't feel overwhelmed, which can happen quite easily. The only reasons you would need to understand this diagram in any detail would be if TensorFlow Serving's default setup doesn't meet your needs, and you need to customize one or more of its main components. With that said, let's break down this diagram a little bit more. The rightmost components here that you see emphasized are doing nothing more than getting models from the file system and wrapping them into save model bundle objects similar to the process we saw in our last video on TensorFlow with C++. TensorFlow Serving, of course, supports much more complicated use cases, and that's also why they modularize it as shown in the picture. Note that TensorFlow Serving generalizes to what we've been calling a model with the words servable, but you can think of them as the same thing. One important responsibility of sources here is keeping track of model versions, which is useful for production environments because we want our model server to automatically discover new trained models and make them available for serving. Uh, and we want this to be the case without having to restart the entire server. The source and loaders don't decide, however, which versions get used. That's the job of the managers. The managers are responsible for ultimately deciding which of the available models will be used when handling requests to the server. The default manager that gets used by the TensorFlow model server binary is called the Aspired Versions Manager, and it dictates which serverable versions to load. Aspired versions just means the versions we want to use, or aspire to use. And finally, all managers have a get servable handle method, and that's ultimately what the client interacts with. We'll now switch over to our editor and show how to both serve and issue requests to a TensorFlow model server. And we'll be doing this with the TensorFlow serving Python API. To install the Python API for Python 3, run the script I've provided under section 5 in our GitHub repository called tfserving python3 setup.sh. Okay, here I've opened predict.py, which is located under section 5, client. And this is the file that we're going to use to issue a simple single request, and it's going to be that same I like dogs request from the last video, to our TensorFlow model server. We'll see how to launch the server in just a few moments, but assume that we've already launched the server and it's located on localhost port 9000 here. So that's going to be the default value for args.server, or what will soon become args.server, which you can customize at the command line to your liking. But well, let's get right in. Our main function starts, we parse our arguments, nothing new here. Make sure that we have the args.server argument specified. So first we split out the host, which was defaulting to localhost, and port, which was the number. And we call get prediction service stub to extract what's called a service stub. And the service stub is what we use to actually issue requests to our model server. So our model server uses what's called gRPC, which we'll go over in a little bit more detail in upcoming slides in the video. But essentially a stub acts as a server type object that we can issue requests to by calling its methods. So the method that we're going to be interested in today is its predict method. So let's see real quick how I've defined get prediction service stub. Scrolling down. This is a very standard way of creating a service with gRPC. We first get what's called the channel. And the easiest one to create and the one you see in most tutorials is the insecure channel. Not something you'd use in a real production environment, but that's going to otherwise include a lot more code than what we get with insecure channel for the purposes of this video. So we grab the channel, beta create prediction service stub, beta because this method is still under beta. I guess all these methods are pretty new. Scroll to the right just to see, we're just passing in channel here and we get our stub. And again, we'll see in just a few moments when we go to our slide on gRPC, the inner working is a little bit more on how these functions are able to return anything of use for us. But for now, just think of this as our Python interface into the TensorFlow model server. Scrolling back up, 
we create the familiar example of I like dogs. This is what we're going to send as a predict request to our TensorFlow model server, which is serving our model from the previous sections, the same one we used in the last video as well. We reshape it because we want it to be in the shape of batch size by number of words, which is what our model functions inputs are going to expect when the mode is predict. So next we're going to feed that to our function predict category, pass in the stub as well as the data that we want to send. See how that's implemented. So first we have to take X and we have to wrap it inside an object that actually makes sense to gRPC and to our server. So let's move on here, kind of going a top down method of implementation. So again, predict request equals get predict request, send in X. And to do this, we use the protobuf objects that are defined under the TensorFlow Serving APIs folder on the GitHub repository for TensorFlow Serving. The link for that directory is provided in the additional resources slide. So in order to make a predict request, this is, uh, by the way, going to correspond to the tf.estimator.export.predict output object that we create when we are in the predict mode. So now we're defining the corresponding object to send when we make predict requests. So a predict request is composed of both a model spec and an inputs mapping. So real quick, I'm going to scroll to the top of the file to show you how I've remembered all of this. At the top of our predict file here, I've actually made a huge comment of how these things are individually defined so they don't have to go jumping around to different files. So predict request, which is right here from the API's predict.proto file, is a protobuf message. It has model spec and inputs. So I would use this to kind of reference what these objects are defined as. That'll make more sense when you're reading the actual implementations we have here. But anyway, I'm going to scroll right back down to get predict request. And of course, feel free to pause at any time to read any of this information a little bit slower than I'm going through it here. So again, predict request composed of a model spec and inputs. So we make our model spec, the name, default, nothing special for us. Signature name, now we get to see a little bit coming from our model from Python, export outputs. So this is what we defined when we made our output object. Remember we passed in a dictionary whose single key was export outputs. So hopefully you're starting to see how these are all connected here. The tf.estimator.export module in TensorFlow is very closely connected with the TensorFlow serving API. So remember we're posting a predict request to our model. Our model under predict, remember we just said we are going to expect that the input feature is a dictionary with key X. So we're going to pass in X similar to how we've done in previous videos too. We have to wrap X in a TensorProto object. Luckily we don't have to know how to construct that ourselves because TensorFlow has a utility function called make TensorProto. We just pass in our numpy array x, specify the shape equals our x dot shape. And then we've made our predict request so we can return it. Going back up to predict category. The main function that we're going to call here, the one to get the actual predict response is simply stub dot predict. So the TensorFlow model server is an implementation of what's called the predict request API. And it's also the definition for that is at the top of this file in that long doc string of definitions. But one of its methods is predict, and it accepts a single predict request object, and it'll return what's called a predict response object. The predict response object also has a model spec, and instead of an input, it has an outputs mapping. So in order to extract our category from that, what our model returned when we do our predict request, aka the code that gets run in our model function under the mode tf.estimator.modekeys.predict, is going to be extracted with our get predicted category. Get predicted category is just a one line implementation here. I've just used it because when I was playing around there's various ways of extracting the information out but the most straightforward way is like I said instead of an inputs mapping like predict request has, predict response has an outputs mapping and it contains what our model returned in its model function under the predict mode. And for us that was the wonderfully named Preds words. We also interacted with this in the last video on C++. And in order to get it in the right format, and which for us is going to be a string, you kind of have to type a little bit more as string val. And remember, this is going to return an array. So we just want the first element of it, decode. So everything here is just kind of, this is what you got to do in order to make it a string, which you learn from trial and error working with these objects. Going back up, we now have our category. And that's pretty much it, actually. It's a, it's a pretty simple procedure once you actually figure out how to implement it.
having it packaged in this nice small way makes it a lot easier to see than maybe some of the more outdated older tutorial examples before. But again, you have access to all of the code that you see here. It's in our GitHub repository under section 5. So to see how this code is run, I have made a quick screencast of me running it on my desktop. And so we first have to launch the server in order to launch the file we just worked with. And to launch the server, we can simply use the TensorFlow model server binary. You can install this various ways from sources. You can get it from the app manager if you're on Ubuntu with sudo apt install TensorFlow model server. But all the details for installing that are in the TensorFlow installation page. So we don't have time to go over all the installation process. It is linked in the additional resources slide. So what you're about to see is me just launching the TensorFlow model server binary by uh, running it in the most basic way possible and then issuing a request with the file we just saw. So I'm going to play it. So on the right hand side of the screen here, I'm going to run serb.sh. That is the run file that I provided inside of our GitHub repository. It's a few lines long and it's just calling TensorFlow model server binary with uh, the default arguments uh, 9000 port and localhost. And this is the output you'd expect running model server at port 9000 localhost, which is 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. So I have this running, and at the same time, I then move over to the left-hand side of the screen. And I execute predict.py with the default arguments. And I get for my I like dogs, again, talk religion miscellaneous. Before we go, I want to provide a little bit more insight into how TensorFlow Serving provides the interface that we just worked with in our example. I hope that it's no surprise by now that the answer is protobufs. If there's an API for something in both Python and C++ with TensorFlow, it's a safe bet that it starts with some protobufs. Here I'm showing a snippet from the prediction service.proto file, which is perhaps the most important proto file in TensorFlow serving, because it defines the interface for the TensorFlow model server. Furthermore, remember how in our estimators model function under predict, we used a predict output object as mentioned earlier? Well, that's exactly what will be used when our model server predict method is called. The same relationship holds for the classify and regress methods as well. As a whole, TensorFlow's export module very closely tied with TensorFlow Serving. Now you may notice that this is a special kind of protobuf that we have not seen before, since it has service instead of message like we usually see. That's because it's gRPC, which is Google's remote procedure call framework. More accurately, this protobuf is using the gRPC protobuf plugin. And when it compiles, you get generated gRPC client and server code, as well as the regular protocol buffer code for populating, serializing, and retrieving your message types. Anyway, the main way you read this is prediction service has an RPC method called predict, which accepts a predict request as its argument and returns a predict response as its output. This is the same predict method we called earlier in our example walkthrough. So a predict request is a regular protobuf message object containing model spec and inputs attributes, both of which we also used in our example walkthrough. Similarly, a predict response has the same model spec attribute and an outputs attribute instead of inputs. Aside from the fancy and very useful file system and version handling things that TensorFlow Serving does, its core interface is implementing the service in C++. What do I mean by that? Well, remember earlier when I said gRPC also generates client and server code? Well, unlike the regular protobuf generated files, we can't just simply use the server code out of the box. We have to actually implement the interface. The stuff shown on the slide merely specifies that a prediction service is something that has a predict method, accepting a predict request, and a predict response. Well, that something is a gRPC service. The point of gRPC is to provide all the nitty gritty framework code involved with standing up a service, so that all we need to do is implement the method specified by our interface. Although it has a small learning curve, once you get used to it, it's an extremely convenient tool, and a tool that TensorFlow Serving is founded upon. To learn more, I've provided the main links that I've used to learn about gRPC and TensorFlow Serving in the additional resources slide, as well as some of my notes that I made while I was learning it. As always, make sure to read through the links here for an in-depth look at the topics covered today. See you next time! Coming up next, TensorFlow Lite! We'll provide a high-level overview of TensorFlow's brand new lightweight solution for mobile embedded devices.